Hi, today we're going to talk about the X and Y chromosome and how genes are inherited on these sex chromosomes. And by the way, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel so that YouTube will suggest this video to other people who are looking for help with this topic as well. Thanks. I appreciate it. So this is a karyotype. In a laboratory, we can take a photograph of all the chromosomes found in a cell during mitosis, and then we can line them up from biggest to smallest. And this actually allows us to see all the chromosomes in a cell. And here we're looking at all the chromosomes of a human cell. So there are 46 in total, and they are in pairs. So you can see there are two chromosome one, two chromosome two, and so forth. So there are 23 different pairs. Now pairs one through 22 are known as autosomes. The 23rd pair is a special pair. These are known as the sex chromosomes because these two chromosomes are going to determine the sex of an individual, whether they're male or whether they are female. Now, here's a drawing of all of the chromosomes lined up from biggest to smallest. And let's zoom in on those sex chromosomes. So when we look at the sex chromosomes, there are two options. There's X and there's Y. So a male individual is going to have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, and a female is going to have two X chromosomes. So if we look back at that karyotype that we looked at previously, when we look at the sex chromosomes, we see that this individual has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. You can tell that because they look like they're different chromosomes. The X chromosome is one of our larger chromosomes, and the Y chromosome is a small chromosome. So let's talk about how the X and Y chromosomes are passed along to the next generation. Now, if we start with diploid cells in the female parent, like the germ cells that will undergo meiosis, during meiosis, those germ cells are going to create eggs. And the pair of chromosomes are going to be separated in different eggs. So as the female parent has two X chromosomes, the eggs are going to have one X or they're going to have the other X chromosome within them. If we look at the male cells and those germ cells that undergo meiosis to form sperm, because a male has an X and a Y chromosome, those two chromosomes are going to be separated into different sperm. So the Y chromosome is going to end up in one sperm, whereas the X chromosome of the male is going to end up in the other sperm. Now we can use this information to figure out how different genders are formed in the various children, the offspring that are possible. So here on the left, we have the two options for mom's eggs, the, her gametes. And because mom is a female, she has two X chromosomes. So she can pass along one X chromosome or the other X chromosome. Now, dad, being male, has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So the X chromosome will be in one sperm, whereas the Y chromosome will end up being in a different sperm. So let's say that this egg is fertilized by this sperm, then the offspring will have two X chromosomes, and that means the offspring will be female. Let's say this egg is fertilized by this sperm, well, the offspring will also be female. If this egg is fertilized by this sperm carrying the Y chromosome, the offspring will have an X and a Y chromosome, and the offspring will be male. And in our last scenario, this egg from mom is fertilized by this sperm from dad, and so the offspring have an X and a Y chromosome, so this person will be male. Now, we're focusing on the sex chromosomes, that 23rd pair. But remember, of course, that mom and dad are going to be passing along chromosomes 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth, right? So they're each passing along 22 other chromosomes, as well as the X chromosome or the Y chromosome. Now, the X chromosome is a rather large chromosome. There are about 2,000 genes found on the X chromosome. And remember, most of those X-linked genes, the genes found on the X chromosome, are non-sexual traits. Because the X chromosome isn't just associated with being a female, everybody, whether male or female, will have at least one X chromosome. And there are many important genes found on the X chromosome. So both males and females need those genes on the X chromosome. On the other hand, the Y chromosome is pretty small. It contains fewer genes. And one of those genes is called the SRY gene, which stands for the sex determining region on the Y chromosome. This SRY gene regulates the expression of genes that trigger male development of the embryo. So 
if there's a Y present in the developing embryo, then the embryo's gonads are going to develop into male gonads, male sexual reproductive organs. If there's no Y present and thus no SRY gene found in that embryo, then the default is going to be for those sexual organs to develop into female reproductive organs. Now, one thing you might have taken away from this, looking at this Punnett square, is it's actually dad that determines the sex of the child, because mom can only pass along X chromosomes. It's actually dad that determines the sex of the child, because in the sperm, the sperm is going to have either dad's X chromosome or dad's Y chromosome. And if a sperm carrying an X chromosome fertilizes an egg, then the offspring is going to be female. But if the sperm carrying the Y chromosome fertilizes an egg, then the offspring is going to be male. So I remember in history, I learned about this English King Henry VIII, who went through several wives trying to secure a male heir. And we can see, we know now, that his wives weren't the problem, because the females can only pass along X chromosomes. If Henry VIII was having trouble siring a male, it's because he was passing along his X chromosome in the sperm that ended up fertilizing the eggs that became his offspring. So it's the male that actually decides whether the child will be male or female. Now, linked genes, when you hear the term linked genes, it means they're genes that are close together on the same chromosome. And when we use the term sex-linked genes, we mean that this is a gene that's located on one of the sex chromosomes, either the X chromosome or the Y chromosome. Now, you might wonder, why do we care if genes are on the X or Y chromosome specifically? Well, if men only have one copy of the X chromosome, and if there's a mutation on the X chromosome that they get, then there's no other chromosome there to compensate for the mutation. And that means that usually a male with a mutation on his X chromosome will present with a disease because the Y chromosome is a different chromosome. So it's a little bit different when we think about the inheritance of genes on the X or the Y chromosome because females have two X chromosomes, but males have an X and a Y chromosome. So here on the left, we see an XY individual, that's male, and we see an XX chromosome, that's female. Now, I've made one of the Xs blue to indicate that there is a mutation on that X chromosome. And let's take a look to see what the potential genetics of the offspring could be if these two individuals have children. Now, if the X from the female is fertilized by a sperm carrying an X from the male, we'll have an individual that's XX, has two Xs. That's a female. And both of those Xs carry the normal gene, the normal allele version. Now, if an egg that carries the X with the mutation is fertilized by a sperm containing uh, an X chromosome without the mutation, then we're going to have an individual who's female, XX, but one of those chromosomes is going to carry a mutation. The other one will be normal. Now, here's our third scenario, that an egg with the normal X from the female is fertilized by a sperm carrying the Y chromosome from a male. So we'll have an XY individual that has the X chromosome that doesn't have the mutation. And the final scenario is that the egg with the mutated X is fertilized by a sperm carrying a Y from the male. And so we end up with an XY individual, which is male, but this individual has the X chromosome that has the gene with the mutation. Now, what does this all mean? Well, the individual that has two normal Xs will not have the disease that's carried on the X chromosome because she has two normal Xs. Similarly, the male that received a normal X chromosome will also not have a disease. Now, it's an interesting scenario for the female that received the normal X chromosome from the male and a copy of the mutated X chromosome from the female. This individual is called a carrier. Because she has a normal copy of the X chromosome, she doesn't have the disease, okay? So there's a backup chromosome. There's a backup gene that's normal on that X chromosome. So she's called a carrier. She doesn't have the disease. She doesn't present with the disease, but she can pass it along to future generations because she carries that mutation on one of her X chromosomes. Now, the male that received the X with the mutation, he will have the disease. 
Now, without a normal copy of the gene on the X chromosome, the male that receives the mutated X chromosome is going to have the disease. Because remember, the Y chromosome is a different chromosome. It does not compensate for changes to the X chromosome. So let's look at the ratios here. And when we're looking at the sex chromosomes, we need to look at the ratios overall, but we also need to look at the ratios in females and males separately. So in the females, we see that half of the females will not have the disease and the other half of the females will be carriers. So there's a 50% chance here that a female offspring of these two individuals will be a carrier. When we look at the males, Half of the males receive the normal X chromosome from mom, and, and so half of the males will not have the disease. On the other hand, the males that receive the X chromosome with the mutation, they will have the disease, okay? So half of the males will have the disease, and half of the males will not have the disease. So you might be asking yourself here, well, is it possible then for females to have this disease? And the answer is yes. But to have the disease, the female, which has two X chromosomes, both of those X chromosomes would have to have the mutation. So dad would have to pass along an X chromosome with the mutation, along with mom passing along a chromosome with the mutation. So X-linked diseases are more common in men because men only have one X chromosome. And there's a 50-50 chance that if his mom is a carrier of the disease, that he's going to receive the X chromosome that also has the mutated gene. So perhaps you've heard of some of these diseases like red-green color blindness or hemophilia. Those are X-linked diseases, meaning that the gene that encodes this, these traits are found on the X chromosome. And that's why these diseases are more frequently found in men than in women. Let's walk through some practice questions concerning the inheritance of X-linked traits. So here's our question. Try to pause the video after we ask the question, see if you can answer the question, and then we'll walk through it together, okay? So here's the scenario. A human female carrier of the sex-linked trait for colorblindness has children with an unaffected male. Question one, what is the chance of the male passing along the trait for colorblindness? Pause the video, and then we'll come back and discuss it together. Okay, so the question is, what is the chance of the male passing along the trait for colorblindness? So first we have to think, okay, the human female is a carrier. Okay, so the woman is a carrier. So we're going to do XX because she's a woman. And we're going to color one of those X's in as blue to indicate that's the one that has the trait for colorblindness. Now, the male is not colorblind because the question tells us that he is unaffected. So he has normal vision. So what is the chance of, of the male passing along the trait for colorblindness? Well, the male is XY, and the X, because we know this is the sex-linked trait, it's on the X chromosome, his X shows the normal allele for vision. So he's XY, and he doesn't have the trait for colorblindness. So what's the chance of the male passing along the trait? Zero. There's a 0% chance that the male could pass along the trait because he's not colorblind, so his ex doesn't have the trait for colorblindness. Here's question two. Same scenario. A female carrier of the sex-linked trait for colorblindness has children with an unaffected male. So what is the chance of the female passing along the trait? Again, pause the video and then come back and we'll talk about the answer. To answer this question, we have to think, okay, what about the female? Well, the question says that the female is a carrier of the sex-linked trait for colorblindness. So we know the female is going to have one X chromosome with the normal vision gene and one X chromosome with the trait for colorblindness. She is a carrier. She doesn't have the disease herself because the normal X compensates for the X with the colorblindness trait. So what's the chance of the female passing along the trait? Well, she has two X chromosomes, so either the normal X or the X chromosome with the colorblindness trait can be passed along. So that's one out of two, or 50%. So you have a 50% chance of passing along the trait for colorblindness. Here's the next part of the question. What proportion of their children will be colorblind? Pause the video, see if you can figure this out, and then we'll go through it together. 
To figure out what proportion of their children will be colorblind, we have to first consider the genetics of the parents. So the mother is a carrier and the father has an, a normal X chromosome and a Y chromosome. So these are the possibilities for the children as we went through before. Now you can do this by saying, okay, what if this X is fertilized by this X and this X is fertilized by this sperm and, and such. And these are the options that you'll get. Or you can do out a pun and square where the two female X's are on one axis and the male X and Y are on the other axis. So if this egg is fertilized by this sperm, we'll get XX. If this egg is fertilized by this sperm, we'll get XY. If this X is fertilized by this sperm, we'll get XX, where one of the X's has the color blindness trait. And if this egg is fertilized by this sperm, then we'll get XY, where the X possesses the trait for color blindness. So when we look at this, what proportion of their children will be colorblind? Now, this didn't say males or females, right? So overall, when we look at the four different possibilities, we can have a female without colorblindness. We can have a male without colorblindness as a possibility. We can have a female carrier for colorblindness. And finally, we can have a male that does have colorblindness. So with four different options there, one out of four or 25% is the likelihood that one of their children will be colorblind. Now let's break this down by the sex of the individual. What proportion of their female children will be colorblind? And to look at this, you look at what the results are of the female offspring. Now, the female offspring can have XX, where both Xs have the normal gene for vision, or we can have a female that is a carrier who has one normal version and one version that has the trait for colorblindness. So what proportion of their female children will be colorblind? Well, 0%. Because remember... Carriers do not have the disease because they have the normal X to compensate for that. So in this scenario, we have the option of a female who did not receive the colorblindness gene, and we have a female who received one copy of the colorblindness gene and, had, and is a carrier. If you want some extra practice, you can try to figure out the genetics of the parents where it would be possible for a female offspring to be colorblind. And then what would the expected ratios of the children be? Here's the next part of the question. Question five, what proportion of their female children will be carriers? Okay, this is an easy one because we just went through it. But when we look at the females specifically, 50% of the females do not have the colorblindness trait, and 50% are carriers. So what proportion of their female children will be carriers? Well, the answer is one out of two, one half, or 50%. Now here's question six. What proportion of their male children will have the disease? In this scenario, we look at the male offspring possibilities, and there are two. So one option is that the male receives the normal gene from the mother on the X chromosome and the Y chromosome from dad. And the other option is that the mother passes along the X chromosome with the colorblindness trait, and the male passes along the Y chromosome. So in this case, that last individual would have colorblindness. And there are two options here, one that does not have the trait and one that has the disease. So the answer is 50%. One out of two is the likelihood that male children will be colorblind. Now you might ask, is it possible for males to be carriers? And no, they cannot be a carrier of an X-linked gene because males only have one X chromosome. So if they receive the X chromosome with the affected gene on it, then they will have the disease. They don't have a backup X because the Y chromosome is a separate chromosome. So I hope this introduction to sex-linked genes has helped you understand a little better how the genetics of sex-linked genes is a little different than the inheritance of genes that are found on our autosomes, chromosomes 1 through 22, because everyone has two copies of each of these chromosomes, but males have only one X chromosome. And that means they have no backup chromosome for an X chromosome that carries the disease allele.